Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five-minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. You're listening to Moral to the Meme. Moral to the Meme. Mondays with your host, Robin Nicole. Robin Nicole. The Inspiration Specialist. Hey, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast, and it is Moral to the Meme Mondays. This is my broadcast where I simultaneously post the meme that actually goes with this actual episode of the show, and I would just like you guys to make sure you check it out. You can hit the link below this podcast and hit blogging. Robin, and you'll be able to actually see the meme that I'm about to talk to you guys about. So this one was a cool throwback. This one was from like maybe, I think this was June 2016. And this is when uh, LeBron finally won the championship game. And he had never won in Cleveland. I'm sorry, they hadn't won in 50 years, maybe 50 or 51 years in Cleveland. And the scripture that I pulled from that was Psalm 118, 22 through 23. Now, that is one of my favorite scriptures, and it has been for quite some time. And it's the the part that says, the stone that the builders have set has now become the cornerstone. Now, if you are not familiar with, with my show, or if you are, and maybe you skipped it, I want you to hit the link below this episode again and go find a prophetic word entitled Cornerstone. And one day God had given me a prophetic word and it was inspired by that particular scripture. And I can remember uh, that the night of the championship, I ended up doing a periscope that night as well. And I remember that wasn't necessarily something that I did. I I still kind of don't do Periscope type, you know, recording and stuff. But I was led to do one that night and I was lit. And I remember that it was so deep about how God, you know, when he says it's your time to be blessed, y'all, he's going to bless you. And that's what inspired this particular piece. And this is what I wrote about it. It says, I'll go ahead and read the full uh, scripture to you. Psalm 118, 22 through 23. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Many of us are waiting on promises from God. Remember, no matter how long it seems, excuse me, no matter how long it seems to take, do your part. When he is ready to make good on his word, you will be able and ready to receive your blessing. Faith without works is dead. Don't let the enemy make you turn your back on God because things look impossible. He can do for you what no man can do in your life. Keep working hard, beat the odds, and most importantly, never ever give up, even when it seems that all hope is lost. Never ever give up. So on the particular picture, and it's an infamous picture at this point, but please definitely hit the um, link and go check out the the photo but it's a photo of him and he is crying like the ugly cry he's hugging his teammate and he's in complete and utter disbelief and he wasn't single-handedly responsible but he had to make a move in order for that to happen so let me give you a little background on that because that's what a real the real moral to the meme lies so he had already won with Miami so there was some uh, some fodder about You know, him leaving there and like just kind of rolling out and then just moving on to something else so that he can get, you know, uh, a championship for his home state. And it was just kind of one of those things where he had to take a lot of backlash, but he had a goal. He had a vision and he wanted to build at his house. He wanted to build, you know, in his home state. And this is what his desire was. He wanted to do it for his city. So whatever his process was i don't know but what i do know is that lebron consistently operates in excellence i'm not super duper big into basketball but i can tell you this there's some people who even if you're not into the sport even if you don't necessarily know what position they play they're pretty much known universally for being somebody who gets the job done so what i thought was really paramount about this particular situation was he was up against somebody else who was incredible steph curry who's somebody that i actually enjoy as well 
And even with Steph, Steph was coming with his A game, but guess what? It was so close, but yes, so far, it didn't happen that time. But it's one of the things, guys, that I want you to remember, especially as we're starting off with a new week. Today is Monday. We want to keep our minds right. We want to keep our minds focused. Okay. All kind of things could have plagued you this weekend. All kind of foolery could have happened, but God is still in control. Okay. So this is what I want you to think about this week with this moral to the meme. Number one. If God has to move you to get you to your promise, pack your bags. Number two, you do not know the day and you do not know the hour. It literally took five decades. It took 50 years. Excuse me. I think it's 51 years for that to happen. Now, let's think about what he had to go through to get there. Number one. He had to leave a place where he was already winning. He won and that he was like, eh, you know what? I'm going to move on. You know, I guess, you know, I don't remember the the, the specifics, but I'm sure the men that's listening, I know you guys know all the particulars and some of the, you know, some of my girls listening who I I know y'all are really into the, the NBA stuff or whatever. I don't really know all the particulars and the dates and times that he left. And I don't know all of that, but this is what I do know. He had to move and he had to leave. And I remember him getting a lot of backlash for that. So just know that if that is a thing for you, you may get some backlash. You may get some backlash. And I don't want you to get it twisted. And I don't want you to think that, you know, just because you're getting opposition or something is not feeling right, that it's not God. And typically when we get things from God, it faces opposition. You know, so I want you to be encouraged with that and keep in mind that God is still trying to do something. And because you don't know the day or the hour, you just want to stay ready. Okay, so that's that's the next point. Stay ready. I need you to stay ready. Now, if you're like, well, okay, Robin, I'll stay ready, but I don't even know how to get ready. Okay, well, guess what? That sounds like a prayer request to me. That sounds like when you finish this podcast, that need to be your first prayer. Well, after you give glory, honor and thanks, ask for forgiveness and repentance, go ahead and drop that on him. Okay, Lord, what is it supposed to be for me? Like, ask the questions that you need to answer. How do I need to be ready? Like, how do I need to reposition or position myself? What is it that I have to do in order to see an answer? How can I see this thing that I desire come to pass? Okay. And here's something else that I want to share. Um, Sometimes, y'all, it can seem like when you see things with your eyes and you see things like you, you just watching everything with your eyes and it just looks really bad. It just looks like everything you see is just the total opposite of what you thought. It just it just seems like it's something and, it's, and it ends up being something else. This is something I need you to remember about this. I want you to think about the 50 years for Cleveland. I want you to think about that. What do you think those 50 years were like? You know, every time you're thinking that you may have a shot and every time that a new year comes, you think it's going to be something and it's not. Something clicked in LeBron and said, you know what? I know what it looks like, but let me get over here because I think I can do it. I know I'm just one man, but I think with the right squad, with the right group of good people, something can pop off. Now, here's the thing. He was with good people before. How many of y'all rocking with folks and it's good, but God might be trying to get you to something great? Because it's not that they weren't great. They achieved greatness together in that season. But what if God tells you for this coming season, that little group got to go and the next level of greatness is going to require a new group of people. That could very well be something that God is going to reveal to you in this hour because y'all, that's how it works. This is how it works. And the thing that will make this go so much smoother for you and so much easier is if you know that it's not personal. These things are not personal. And listen, if you haven't, um, go check out the show I called um, New Help. There you go. It's called New Help. And it aired last week on last Thursday. So it's just a couple down underneath this one. Listen to New Help because that was for someone too. It's like God is, is switching things up. And here is the thing. He's not making it like a pressure point. You know, God does not always have to come with force. Typically, when God has to do something and it it turns into a shout, you pretty much been ignoring God and been disobedient to the point where he's like, I don't your free will is one thing, but this has to still get done in the earth. And he just might be coming like, hey, listen, I need you to handle your business and go over here. And again, God, he can make he can make us do anything we want, but he chooses not to. 
because he gives us that option with free will and he doesn't backbite or go back on his word. So he has to keep that word concerning that. But at the end of the day, if you are truly believing God, just know something. The instructions he may give you may not be what you're thinking. He may tell you to walk away. He may tell you to walk into. He may tell you to be still and be quiet. He may tell you to run around the block. He may tell you to cartwheel. You don't know what he's going to tell you, but when he does, you need to be willing to do it. Trust me, this is a note to myself as well. But whatever this is that God is going to tell you to do in order to get to that thing coming to pass, you just be open and be willing to do it because you don't want to be outside of his will. You would, you don't want to be that guy that, you know, the thing comes up and then you look back and you say, man, I jacked that up real good. I missed it. Let me tell you something. When a man has a plan and he's focused on something, there's nobody that can make him deviate from that. And, you know, I don't, I don't know anybody who wants a promise from God have done. I don't know anybody who wants to settle with, with something where, you know, they, when you're asking God for something, but you're willing to settle for it. I don't know anybody that genuinely wants that. I'm not saying people don't take that. I've settled before. And that's why I'm so passionate about not settling now. Because what you never want to do is give the impression that God is so small or on your level or on my level, on our level, that we can only get these little crumbs that we can only foreshadow and see in our minds. You know, somebody, somebody in management, somebody who's putting out millions of dollars a year for this team every year, somebody kept saying, we're going to keep putting money into this because we think at some point it's going to bear fruit. And here is the thing. Y'all, LeBron was all in Miami, y'all. You know, he was in Miami. It wasn't on nobody's mind that a couple of years after that, he was going to win a championship for Cleveland. Because it was all about Miami. That's where all his attention was. That's what it was all about. So, again, don't be discouraged by what you see. Because, y'all, you could be looking at something right now that look like it's all up and popping. It's jam tight. It's going to be this and it's that. And you don't see your place in it. But let me tell you something. When something is yours, it is yours. And it does not matter what it looks like in front of you. It does not matter how it's crafted to appear. If it is not of God, if it is not supposed to last, it won't last. So remember, while you might feel like you're being rejected, while you may feel like God is taking forever, I don't know what's going on, are you going to do this for me? While you may feel all of these disparaging things, God has a plan that you cannot see. He knows something that you do not know. So if you are the stone that was rejected, so if you are the person that's been waiting forever, if you are the person that's been doing the work consistently and you feel like somebody else then weaseled their way in and now they got a shot at what you did, just be patient and not only be patient because that's easy to say, but I'm, I'm, you know what? Persevere. That's what you do. You persevere because patience is one thing. And if you missed the healing experience, y'all check out the first week of the healing experience for January. And I talk about the book from Adrian Moore about process to purpose. Um, your purpose has a sound. And she was talking about Job and how Job, you know, everybody talks about the patience of Job, but it was the perseverance of Job that got him through. So that's what I'm talking about. Y'all, LeBron had to persevere. Okay, you're going to have to persevere. Job had to persevere. So I need you to do that. I need you to keep your mind on that. I need to keep your mind on the main thing. Because if you get caught up in what you see, if you get, ca get caught up in how all of this looks in front of you, you will get further and further away from your promise because you're thinking that is one thing and it's not. And who knew God had already been cooking it up for him to still win a championship in Miami. I mean, in, uh, in Cleveland, he had already, he went away and he won that thing over there. He went away and did whatever he needed to do over there. But who knew? Who knew? God knew. God knew that years later, 50 years later, he was going to make history in his home state where he started from. God is going to take you back where you belong. You will end up where you belong and you will get the victory. Whatever that's supposed to look like for you, I just need you to be encouraged today and know that you will get the victory. I'm Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at I'm Wired to Inspire .com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five star rating on iTunes. For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the inspiration specialist.life or I'm wired to inspire.com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.